you have $300 to spend on a new GPU, should you buy an Intel Arc A770? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt and welcome back to Blackbird PC Tech and our next video in our Ultimate PC Component Fighting Championship series. This series is focused on helping you make the tough choices when building your dream PC. Choices like, should I buy CPU-X or CPU-Y? Should I buy GPU-X or GPU-Y? Should I use an air cooler or AIO? These are all profound life-changing questions that we take very seriously here at Blackbird. PC Tech. In this series, we are going to help you make the right choice by pitting two components against each other in the PC Octagon to see who wins. In this video, our focus will be on Intel's top Arc Alchemist GPU with the Intel Arc A770 limited edition 16 gigabyte in the red corner, taking on the PNY GeForce RTX 4060 Virto dual fan in the blue corner. Before the battle gets started, I wanted to talk a little about Intel's Arc GPUs. Intel made a huge splash when they announced in 2021 that they were planning to re-enter the discrete GPU market to compete with Nvidia and AMD. They missed their initial launch window due primarily to software driver challenges, but ended up launching their higher-end Arc Alchemist A750 and A770 GPUs in October of 2022. The good news is they launched these discrete GPUs with a number of excellent features, such as HDR, AV1 encoding, and a real-time deep learning image upsampling technology called XESS, which directly competes with NVIDIA's DLSS and AMD's FSR. They also launch with multiple AIB partners, such as ASRock, Sparkle, and Acer. The bad news is that their performance suffered from poor software drivers, particularly at launch. An early investigation by Gamers Nexus discovered 43 known driver issues with Arc GPUs, prompting a response and acknowledgement of the issues from Intel. Another challenge for the Arc Alchemist family of GPUs was that they only include hardware support for DirectX 11 and 12 and Vulkan graphics APIs, with older DirectX 9 and 10 and OpenGL APIs being supported by software. As a result, Arc Alchemist GPUs initially performed notably worse than competing NVIDIA and AMD GPUs in games that only use these older APIs, including multiple DirectX 9-based esports titles such as Counter-Strike, League of Legends, and StarCraft 2. To Intel's credit, they rapidly addressed these initial challenges challenges with multiple post-launch driver updates. For example, a December 2022 driver update improved Arc compatibility and performance by up to 1.8 times with DirectX 9 based games. Fast forward to today and Intel continues to make significant progress with their driver software development. New games get rapid driver releases and it appears that most of the early issues with daily use of the drivers are gone, resulting in a much more enjoyable experience. It's not perfect, but it shows that Intel is serious about discrete GPUs and it gives me hope for the next gen Intel Arc GPUs that are coming in 2024, but more about that later in the video. When the A770 was first released, I immediately purchased the limited edition version. However, I was hesitant to use it because of the bad press surrounding their drivers. With the positive reception around the release of their latest drivers, I thought it would be a good time to finally check it out and see what it's really like to use. Referring to a chart from Tom's Hardware that shows relative GPU performance at 1440p ultra settings, it appears that the A770 was targeted as a direct competitor to the RTX 4060 and RX 7600, and as an upgrade path for people with an RTX 3060. This makes a lot of sense from a business perspective, as the RTX 3060 is by far the most popular GPU on the latest Steam GPU survey, so that is a fantastic market opportunity for Intel, if it works as intended. So if you have an RTX 3060 and $300 to spend on a new GPU, should you buy an Intel Arc A770? Let's find out. As mentioned earlier, the battle today is between the Intel Arc A770 limited edition 16 gigabyte card in the red corner, taking on the PNY GeForce RTX 4060 Virto dual fan card in the blue corner. The test system being used to run the benchmarks is my Intel based open bench table with the following components. For the CPU, we have an Intel Core i7-14700K. For the motherboard, we have an ASUS ROG Maximus Z690 Extreme. For RAM, we have G-Skill Trident Z5 RGB 96GB kit of DDR5-6400-CL32. For storage, we have two 2TB two Samsung 980 Pro NVMe SSDs. For the CPU cooler, we have an ASUS ROG Ryzen 2 360mm AIO. And for the PSU, we have an EVGA Supernova 1200P2 1200W Platinum Power Supply. 
Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. For the Intel Arc A770, I wanted to see what it could really do, so I gave it a mild overclock by increasing the GPU core power limit by 38 watts to 228 watts and GPU performance boost slider by 15%. For the PNY RTX 4060, I left it at stock settings to provide a default baseline. One thing that is important to note is that resizable bar is extremely important for the Arc series cards, so make sure you have that turned on in your motherboard by us if you plan to use one of these cards daily. Given that these are mid-range GPUs, I also limited testing to resolutions of 1080p and 1440p, since 4K will not run above 60Hz in most games at ultra settings. With the GPUs ready to go, let's check the benchmarks, but before we do, I think it's only appropriate to introduce this the right way. Over to you, Bruce. And wow. the components fighting for Blackbird PC Tech Benchmark Supremacy. In the blue corner, we have the champion. In the red corner, we have the challenger. Who will win this battle royale? Stay tuned to find out. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that even though the launch of the Arc series of GPUs was not ideal, Intel's continuous driver improvement shows they are serious about discrete GPUs, which in turn gives me hope for the future. So what does that future look like? During a recent interview, Intel's Tom Peterson confirmed that the second generation Arc Battlemage GPUs are on schedule for a 2024 release, and that 30% of their software team is already working to make sure that the launch drivers for these cards are robust. The first silicon is also confirmed to be running in the labs, and the hardware team is now working on the third gen Arc Celestial GPU family, which are expected to arrive in 2025. This is all great news for consumers since we need a strong third competitor to help alleviate some of the price growth that has occurred over the last few years. The big challenge for Intel is how fast they can catch up and move up the performance stack, especially since Nvidia and AMD will not be standing still. The good news is we don't have to wait long to find out. In this video, we pitted two $300 GPUs against each other in the PC Octagon to see who will emerge victorious, with the Intel Arc A770 Limited Edition 16GB in the red corner, taking on the PNY GeForce RTX 4060 Virto Dual Fan in the blue corner. Unfortunately for Intel, the round-by-round -round results show a clear victory for Team Blue, with 12 victories, 5 losses, and 3 draws across 20 hard-fought rounds. When you look at the average performance across 14 games, the FPS advantage for the 4060 is 
is around 15% at 1080p, dropping to around 7% at 1440p, which is a meaningful difference and represents a distinct advantage for the 4060. When we look at power efficiency, this advantage extends further, with the 4060 achieving this performance at significantly lower power draws. What happens when we look at cost? Unfortunately, the ARC A770 limited edition card is no longer available. So if we use its launch price of $349.99, then it was $50 more expensive than the PNY RTX 4060 that we tested, which is a price premium of around 17%. If you convert these prices into gaming efficiency, then the average frames per second per dollar for the RTX 4060 is about 23% higher than the ARC A770, which is huge. If you look at currently available A770, it's clear that the AIB partners recognize this and price their cards accordingly. So if you now replace the Intel A770 Limited Edition with an ASRock Challenger A770 at $299.99 and convert this into gaming efficiency, assuming that the performance remains the same as the Limited Edition card, then the advantage for the RTX 4060 has dropped to only 5%, which is obviously a much better result for Intel. Before I give my final recommendation, we really need to talk a little about the user experience and what it was like to run these tests with Intel Arc control software. I was genuinely surprised with how easy installation of the control software and drivers was. The interface of the software is simple, but allows you to do everything you need, including overclocking. The drivers worked in every game I tested them on, which was also somewhat unexpected. The only issue I really had was when I attempted to change the screen resolution in games to something different than the native monitor resolution. I would oftentimes have to reboot the game after changing the setting to make sure that the game would run in exclusive full screen mode. This is not really an issue for most people, but when you benchmark lots of games at different resolutions, it can be somewhat annoying. Other than that, I was quite impressed by the Intel Arc A770, and I have no issue recommending it to someone looking to replace their aging RTX 3060. However, considering the performance and maturity of Nvidia and AMD's offerings at this price point, it's still a tough sell to get someone to select an A770. Intel is going to have to be very aggressive with pricing of Battle Mage to compete well against Nvidia and AMD in the future, but at least now they have a solid foundation to build from. Don't expect Battle Mage to compete with a 4090, but if it can compete well with 70 series cards, that would be a great next step for Intel. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Ultimate PC Component Fighting Championship Battle Series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes as other components battle it out in the PC Octagon. Please also comment and offer suggestions on any future components that you would like to see go head to head. Bye for now.